This hearing of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee will come to order. We are here today to consider nominations for five very important positions. On the first panel, we will hear from Mr. Thomas Nides to be the ambassador to Israel, Mr. David Cohen to be the ambassador to Canada, and Dr. Cynthia Tellez to be ambassador to Costa Rica. Uh, we're also uh, pleased to have a number of our colleagues here to introduce some of these nominees. So I'll turn to them in order. Senator Klobuchar, I understand you'll be introducing Mr. Nines. Well, thank you very much, Chairman, and to Ranking Member Risch as well. Uh, the work this committee does touches the lives of people all over the world, and we thank you for that. Uh, right now, in the wake of new leadership in Israel, it is a critically important moment in our alliance with our friend and ally. And we have with us today uh, someone with the experience, credibility, and respect to serve as our ambassador to Israel. And he just happens to have been born in Minnesota, as usual. Um, and I am so proud to introduce my good friend, Tom Nides. Uh, with Tom today is his son, Max, um, who will testify to the fact that his dad is wise and patient all the time. Right, Max? OK, good. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about Tom. He grew up in Duluth as the youngest of eight siblings. His father, Arnold, served as the president of Temple Israel and of the Duluth Jewish Federation, and his mother, Shirley, was a teacher. His sister, Jane, told the Duluth News Tribune that their parents would be going crazy with joy if they were alive to see their son nominated to serve as ambassador to Israel. Um, I was amused the day that Tom was nominated to read the headline in the Duluth News, which said simply this, man who grew up in Duluth nominated ambassador to Israel. Tom was innovative from a young age. As a senior at Duluth East High School, he was tasked with finding a speaker for his high school graduation. Being the proud Minnesotan he was, he wanted Walter Mondale, who just happened to be vice president of the United States, he learned that the best time as a high schooler to catch the vice president's chief of staff was at 5.30 in the morning. He reached out and Walter Mondale agreed to speak at his high school graduation. A year later, Tom and I met as interns for the vice president. And I remember walking in and seeing him sitting at the desk um, as a 20 year old, his uh, legs sprawled up on the desk above him, sitting on the chair with a vice presidential pin on his lapel, and I watched him answer the phone and say, Tom Nides with the vice president's office, in a tone that would convince anyone that he was no 20-year-old intern, but he was, in fact, the chief of staff. Uh, while I was assigned to do the furniture inventory um, and write down the serial number of every lamp and desk, Tom got to save the Lake Superior foghorn for the city of Duluth, and just like everything else, he got it done. Since then, he continued to serve ably, and most importantly for our work here, optimistically, in many leadership positions, including in the halls of Congress and in two presidential administrations. He was a trusted advisor to Congressman Tony Coelho and to Speaker Tom Foley. Uh, he worked for Mickey Cantor in the office of the United States Trade Representative, and he later served as Deputy Secretary of State for management and resources with Secretary Clinton under President Obama. During that time, he distinguished himself as a key voice on Israel and an advocate for humanitarian support for our US allies. For his outstanding service, he was awarded the Secretary of State's Distinguished Service Award, our country's highest diplomatic honor. His private sector and trade background, as well as his strong background in Middle Eastern policy, makes him the perfect choice to serve as our ambassador to Israel, one of our strongest and most enduring allies. Members on both sides of the aisle understand that the deep friendship between our two countries is based on shared values, and that Israel's interests in the Middle East are strongly aligned with our own. Support for Israel can never, ever become a partisan issue. Now more than ever, we need an ambassador dedicated to fostering lasting peace and stability. I'm confident that as ambassador, Tom will further the close alliance between our two nations and our commitment to prosperity in the region for generations to come. 
He will do a phenomenal job, Mr. Chair, and I strongly urge the committee to support his nomination. Thank you to the members of the committee. Thank you very much. Senator Casey, Senator Toomey, I understand you'll be introducing Mr. Cohen. I'll ask Senator Casey to go first and then Senator Toomey. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much. I'm honored to be here with you and appreciate this opportunity, as well as um, thanking the ranking member for this opportunity to say a few words about my friend David L. Cohen to serve as ambassador to Canada. I'm especially grateful to be joined by Senator Toomey. Uh, we don't always appear together on big issues, but today we're united in our uh, recommendation and our commendation of the work of, of David Cohen. I've known David for more than a quarter of a century, and I've seen him in all kinds of circumstances, most of them in connection with uh, public service. Many of you know that um, David served, uh, in addition to being a very successful lawyer and, and uh, doing the, the work of, of a lawyer and an advocate, he served as chief of staff to the mayor of Philadelphia, Ed Randell. To be chief of staff to, of, to be chief of staff to, of, of a mayor of one of America's largest cities is about as difficult a job as anyone can imagine. Uh, but he did, did it well, and he served the people of Philadelphia with distinction. I think it also uh, bears repeating that uh, sometimes the most difficult jobs in public service uh, also are the jobs that teach you a lot about what public service is. David understands the commitment you've got to make to be a public servant. <clears throat> I think he's demonstrated that over and over again. In addition to his work for the city and his work as a lawyer, later, of course, he joined Comcast. And I tried to itemize or list all of the roles he played at Comcast, and I'll just give you just a, uh, a, a, a partial list of the work that he did, serving in major leadership positions at Comcast, whether it was, whether it was legal work or government affairs, communications, administration, real estate. Um, did a lot of work in diversity and inclusion uh, to, to help lead a major uh, corporation in, in the city of Philadelphia, and of course, charitable giving. All of those roles he played, all of that work he did and more, um, helped Comcast to grow and to be such an important uh, corporate partner in Philadelphia for so many uh, institutions in the city. His community service, um, I think, is unparalleled, at, whether it's at Penn Medicine, the work he did at the uh, Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, uh, the work he's done at, with organizations like the Urban League, and on and on. We could list many more. I don't think I have to remind members of this committee, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, about the importance of our relationship with Canada our second largest trading partner, uh, ever more so important in the context of the challenges we face today, whether it's uh, fighting COVID-19 or future, bar future viral security challenges, managing climate change, addressing the opioid crisis, on and on, trade issues, economic issues. A lot of those issues, of course, involve many, many Pennsylvania businesses and businesses across the country that rely upon uh, the stability and the strength of this relationship. I'd say this in conclusion, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I've served um, in the Senate now. This is my 15th year. And um, in those years, I've seen David commit himself to excellence in every, every job that he, and every task that he was, um, he, he was presented with. I also got to know over those uh, quarter century or more, his wife Rhonda, who in her own way has contributed so much to public service. I asked Rhonda just before this hearing, I said, Rhonda, is David ready? And she said, yes, and that's all I needed to know. He's ready to do this job at a at critically important time in our nation's history. The last thing I'll say is this. There's a, a line in the scriptures, to, him, to whom much has been given, much is expected. The good Lord gave David a lot, an intellect, a strength of character, a commitment to helping people, 
And uh, we've asked him to do a lot. Um, and much is and has been expected of him. And he has never failed to deliver. I have no doubt that will be the case when he serves as our ambassador to Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Toomey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Risch, and members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Thank you for allowing me to introduce briefly my friend David Cohen and express my enthusiastic support for his nomination to be our next U.S. Ambassador to Canada. And thank you, David, for your willingness to serve. I was uh, delighted to see your wife, Rhonda, is here with you, and I appreciate the sacrifices required of individuals, but also their families, when they choose to go into public service and I am glad to see that you're up for this challenge. You know, there's a passage about David in Buzz Bissinger's excellent book, A Prayer for the City. It's a book that chronicles the administration of Philadelphia Mayor Ed Rendell, which, as Senator Casey pointed out, is an administration in which David Cohen served as chief of staff. Uh, I think the passage is relevant for today's hearing, so I'm going to read it briefly. It's about David Cohen, and it says, and I quote, it wasn't just his prodi prodigious capacity for work that made him so good at what he did. It was his patience as a negotiator, the way in which he determined the result he wanted, and then, as Macadon put it, exhibited a willingness to stay with something forever until he got there. In the meantime, he never got frustrated. He never personalized or railed or sought vendettas. Once again, the normal human impulse to get angry and become agitated it never even surfaced, end quote. See, Mr. Chairman, I think there's a word for this kind of quiet, thoughtful, persistent approach to getting things done. It's called diplomacy. David's a longtime resident of Pennsylvania, a very active member in the community, as Senator Casey pointed out. Um, I think it's important to point out that while serving as chief of staff to Mayor Ed Rendell through the 90s, he played a central role in pulling the city out of really dire fiscal circumstances and placing it on a stable footing. He led a prestigious U.S. law firm prior to joining Comcast Corporation in 2002. Senator Casey mentioned some of the many roles that David has played at Comcast. I would just point out that in addition to helping to forge Comcast into a telecommunications powerhouse, David also helped to establish Comcast as a really exceptional corporate citizen for Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and our country, including, among many other things, donating millions of dollars to myriad charitable causes across the country. David's many career accomplishments are accompanied by an extensive record of service. As Senator Casey pointed out, he's long served on many, many boards and advisory panels supporting Philadelphia in particular, and its academic, athletic, arts communities, just to name two. He was for over a decade, the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the University of Pennsylvania. And currently, he sits alongside Senator Casey and myself on the U.S. Semi-Quincentennial Commission. Now, all the members of this committee understand full well how important Canada is as one of America's allies and neighbors. We rely on Canada as a major trade, energy, and security partner. Frankly, Pennsylvania's proximity to Canada uh, it gives us a particularly strong tie to that country, and our representation, representation of Canada is all the more important for folks in the Commonwealth. Fact is, President Biden made an outstanding choice in choosing David for this post. David Cohen's very strong business background, his deep understanding of government at all levels, and his passion for service prepare him well for this role. So, Mr. Chairman, I enthusiastically support his nomination and encourage my colleagues to do likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and least, uh, last but not least, our distinguished colleague from California, who's going to introduce Dr. Tejas, Senator Padilla. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member uh, Rich, and members of the committee. Uh, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Cynthia Tejas this morning uh, from the great state of California and President Biden's nominee to serve as ambassador to Costa Rica. Uh, as a clinical professor in the UCLA School of Medicine's Department of Psychiatry and a widely published researcher, Dr. Tejas is widely recognized for her work in healthcare, 
and especially in improving the lives of those with mental illness. For more than three decades, Dr. Theus has directed UCLA's Spanish-speaking psychosocial clinic, where she has helped train a generation of clinicians to provide culturally competent mental health services for Latino communities. In addition to her work in healthcare, Dr. Theus brings life experience from the region and from serving on a number of nonprofit organizations and government commissions. As a longtime member of the Board of Directors of the Pacific Council on International Policy, she has worked closely with industry and governmental uh, actors to promote global engagement in Los Angeles, throughout California, and beyond. She has served as a commissioner in the city of Los Angeles, sec America's second largest city, for almost 20 years, as well as having served on the board of the California Community Foundation and for nearly a decade serving on the board of the California Endowment, California's largest health foundation. Dr. Theus also continues a family legacy of public service, including deep ties to Costa Rica. Her father, Raymond Theus, was the first Latino to serve as a U.S. ambassador, appointed by President Kennedy in 1961. Dr. Theus grew up determined to fight for the world's inequities from a young age. During her father's ambassadorship, she lived in Costa Rica, where she found her calling for both public service and public health. Dr. Theus is a uniquely well-qualified person to represent the United States in Costa Rica, an important regional partner. She brings a wealth of experience, dedication, and compassion to her role representing the United States in Costa Rica. I strongly support her nomination and I urge for her swift confirmation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Padilla. With that background, maybe we should have Dr. Tejas work with us here in Washington to solve a few things. <laughs> but thank you very much. Thank you all the senators who made presentations. Um, let me turn now um, first to a, few, a little bit of committee business before I get to the nominees. I want to appreciate the ranking member's willingness to move forward with nine nominees that the committee was scheduled to consider today. We postponed the hearing this afternoon out of a deference to one of our members, but that has been rescheduled for next week. I'm also glad that you agreed to a few of the nominees that I propose for hearings next week, and that you indicated, albeit with many caveats, that you may be ready to notice more. I certainly hope that materializes. I remain deeply concerned, however, by the delays and obstacles facing the bulk of nominees when it comes to securing your approval for their hearings. It is inexplicably taking an average of six weeks, almost 40 days, from the time a nominee's file is complete to the time that uh, the minority is willing to move forward, and that's just for a hearing. This is almost four weeks slower than it took during a similar period in 2009. I, I ask, how's that possible? As you know, we have a massive backlog at the State Department, USAID, and other nominations pending before the committee. We have almost reached 80, and the number continues to grow. The nominations uh, pending include ambassadorships to China, Japan, and countries throughout Latin America, Africa, and Europe places where a competition with China and Russia is real, where we need ambassadors in place to project U.S. power, to assist our citizens, and to promote our companies. So I just asked Senator Risch, I, I, I appreciate the work we've done so far. I need your full cooperation and participation to tackle this backlog. Um, I would just note that when faced with similar numbers in 2009, the majority and the minority worked together to move 57 nominees in just one month. There's no reason we can't do that if we work together. To date, I have noticed only nominees who the ranking member has agreed to. In fact, I've bent over backwards to restore the tradition of comedy that was abandoned in the last Congress. But the slow pace and many obstacles to moving nominees is unacceptable. It's dangerous. We're less safe when our national security agencies are so short-staffed we have to fix this problem. We owe it to the Senate, and we owe it to all Americans, and I look forward to working with you to try to achieve that. Let me turn to our nominees. Uh, welcome 
and thank you and your families for your willingness to serve the country in this capacity. I'll briefly address uh, each of the positions uh, that you have been nominated for. Mr. Nides, welcome back to the committee. I'm pleased to see such a qualified and capable nominee for one of our most vital allies. Your extensive experience in management, including as the Deputy Secretary of State, will surely serve you well in navigating the particulars of our embassy in Jerusalem. As Israel settles into its new government, it's critical that we have an experienced diplomat in place to help pursue many of our shared U.S. and Israeli interests across national security, technology, cultural, and religious exchanges. And while some may try to exploit any small fissures or differences in policy opinions between our two countries, this committee, the Senate, and the Congress as a whole have repeatedly confirmed our unwavering support for Israel's security, its right to defend itself in the face of neighbors who continue to threaten to wipe it off the map. Finally, uh, to all our friends who may or may not be watching in Israel and here, uh, let me wish you all a Hag Sukkot Sameer, um, and uh, I look forward uh, to hearing from Mr. Nides. I'm also pleased that we are reviewing the nomination of our next ambassador to Canada. Our alliance with our northern neighbors, one of the most important partnerships that we have, united by shared security interests and strengthened by expansive economic ties. Our nations are linked by a common commitment to democratic principles and to tackling the most pressing challenges on the global stage. It's with the deepest respect that we also remember that our Canadian brothers and sisters fought alongside our men and women for decades, most recently in Afghanistan. Yet during the last administration, the, this most essential alliance was too often marked by tensions and tariffs, marred by insults aimed at Canadian leaders, and neglected by an absentee U.S. ambassador. It's imperative that we rebuild our relationship with Canada, deepen our collaboration to address the challenges posed by China and Russia, and work together to address the threats posed by climate change. So Mr. Cohen, I have no doubt you are the right person to tackle these challenges and upon confirmation will be a strong and effective ambassador. I'm also pleased that we're considering the nomination of our next ambassador to Costa Rica. As it celebrates its bicentennial, Costa Rica stands out for its consistency on the global stage and leadership on environmental stewardship. Costa Rica is also an example of democratic resiliency in Central America at a time when the region is plagued by weak rule of law and leaders who have embraced authoritarian tactics. It's also unique that we're considering a candidate whose father served as ambassador to Costa Rica under President Kennedy. I'm pleased that Dr. Tellez, if confirmed, will carry forward a family commitment to strengthening our partnership and advancing U.S. interests in Costa Rica. We look forward to hearing your testimonies. Let me now turn to the distinguished ranking member, Senator Rich, for his opening remarks. Well, thank you, Mr.